Um, those are the forward Drago, the forward Draco thrusters. Advanced Air Mobility, or AAM, is NASA's vision to map out a safe, accessible, and affordable new air transportation system, enabled by transformational technology such as electric and automation, leading to both local and intra-regional applications. One area of innovation that Advanced Air Mobility will impact is in healthcare. Healthcare is an exciting AAM mission that is entirely focused on helping people by keeping them safe through contactless delivery and allowing for better access to healthcare through transportation services. NASA's Advanced Air Mobility mission is doing critical research and development on areas that will make the Advanced Air Mobility system safe and sustainable. Healthcare use cases are in their infancy within the Advanced Air Mobility ecosystem. Advances in both technology and regulatory environments will enable aviation healthcare use cases that better serve the general public. There are many things already happening in the healthcare industry with AAM, including lungs being delivered using drones, moving supplies to remote areas globally, performing medical deliveries such as prescription refills, and hospital systems using drones to deliver blood, creating efficiencies in their supply chain and getting results back to patients sooner. Another exciting area of AAM is urban air mobility, with multiple companies domestically and internationally focusing entirely on developing new types of innovative vehicles for use in the medical arena. This is NASA TV. Houston on two, stand by, we're working through some connection issues. 
We're standing by. Station. Station. This is Dan Hewitt with NASA PAO. How do you hear me? And Dan and uh, NASA PAO, we hear you loud and clear. How do you hear us? I have you loud and clear. Thanks, Chell. All right, we will kick things off. Welcome, everyone. Thanks to our crew for astronauts for taking some time to answer questions before they get ready to begin their journey home. Quick logistics, reporters on the phone bridge. Remember, dial star one to be added to the queue. And if you have a question on social media, use the hashtag AskNASA. So before we jump in, I'm going to hand it off to Crew 4 Commander Chell Lindgren of NASA for some quick opening comments. Take it away, Chell. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, well, we're, here we are at the, the end of our expedition, the end of our uh, uh, space station mission. Um, we launched in late April. We've been up here for almost six months, and uh, we've had an extraordinary experience under Oleg and Samantha's leadership. Um, we've done a lot of science, uh, taken in some amazing views, uh, but now we're excited to get home to our families. So uh, we are uh, immensely grateful uh, to all of the people that were a part of of, of this journey, um, folks that helped us get trained, our partners at SpaceX and uh, NASA and at centers all over the world uh, that uh, prepared us for this mission. Um, I think that uh, the, we had a, a great experience up here. We got a lot of good work done and uh, we're excited to get home. So thanks to everybody that made that possible. All right, and thank you, Chell. We'll jump right over to the phone bridge again, star one, if you want to get in the queue to ask a question. Our first one will come from Marsha Dunn in the Associated Press. Marsha. I'm wondering, I'm going to ask you the obligatory question. Besides family and friends, what are you looking forward to most about returning to Earth? And uh, Samantha, I'm going to assume that might be a good espresso, but you tell me. And, and if each of you could answer, thank you. <laughs> uh, I think you hit the nail on the head for most of the crew on the espressos uh, anyway. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks for that question. I think for me, uh, certainly some ice cream, some pizza, uh, but above all, uh, you, I mean, you nailed it. It's seeing uh, family and friends uh, when we get home. Our families make such big sacrifices for us to be able to come up here and do this amazing thing and, uh, you know, to benefit humanity. But uh, getting back and seeing them, getting those first few hugs uh, when we get back uh, is really going to be awesome. Really looking forward to that. I'd say besides family and friends uh, and a good shower, I uh, certainly uh, look forward to the opportunity of spending time in nature and just uh, um, enjoying all the sensations that a natural uh, environment provides uh, that I think are so uh, important for our emotional well-being. Yeah, and I certainly um, concur with my, my crewmates here, uh, family, friends, and uh, good food. <laughs> and I'll, I'll join in uh, probably a, a, a cold drink with ice in it, um, drinking, drinking from a, a, a glass or a mug and uh, some great coffee. Um, Ice cream sounds really good. I'm actually yeah. taking notes from everybody here because uh, it all sounds really great. Um, but definitely looking forward to get, getting back home, getting back to our families, and, uh, and just uh, relaxing um, with everybody there. All right. Thanks, crew. Our next one will come from Elizabeth Howell, space.com. Elizabeth. All right, sounds like we might have lost Elizabeth. We'll jump now to Bill Harwood with CBS News. Bill? Yeah, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Um, you got a fairly long transit, assuming you get to undock tomorrow and the weather uh, cooperates. You've got a fairly long transit to splash down. How challenging is that in a spacecraft the size of Crew Dragon? And what have previous Crew Dragon uh, astronauts told you all about what to expect during reentry. How smooth is the ride? Are you expecting, you know, the kind of G's you'll be pulling, that sort of thing? Thanks. 
You know, I, I think that, uh, thank you for the question. It sounds like maybe we'll have up to 20 hours um, in, during phasing to get to back home for a reentry. Uh, I think that we're all kind of looking forward to it. You know, um, it is a definitely a smaller volume than we're used to here up on station, but we, we had about a 17 hour transit on our way up here. Everything was very new um, for, for two of our crew as we were new to, to weightlessness. Um, now I think we've got a lot of experience in here, uh, experience with weightlessness and uh, living and working in space. And so to be back in that, that homey um, crew dragon volume, I think is gonna actually be a lot of fun. And uh, we're gonna soak in, I mean, it's an opportunity, kind of a bonus opportunity to just soak in the, the amazing views of the earth um, as, uh, as we're ready to, to get home. Uh, do you Yeah, I think the other benefit is we actually like each other. So, um, well, <laughs> I might be too presumptuous, but uh, <laughs> but uh, so having some time together uh, without the busyness of the workday and, and things like that. So there'll certainly certainly be things for that we have to do and take care of uh, on the way home. Uh, as far as what we've heard from other crew members, it sounds like it's a really smooth ride. Uh, it, you know, obviously we've been up here in uh, in microgravity for six months. So uh, starting as we start feeling those G's come on. Uh, it's going to feel even more extreme than it would uh, in, a, in a normal day. So. Uh